Felix here. Good evening, guys from Hong Kong. Good morning to many of you. Appreciate you joining in, guys. Now, we obviously have quite a bit of... Uh, well, certainly needy coverage, DD coverage rather, I'm going to say needy. Uh, needy is the new ticker, it's, it's a merger of Neo and DD, uh, just kidding. Uh, to go through, and uh, before we get into that guys, always bear in mind this is not financial advice please, um, and uh, if you should be so inclined to do your own research, which I highly recommend, uh, always do that guys, be smart, check all the facts no matter where you read them, uh, do your own DCFs and everything, uh, don't rely on anybody, uh, you can of course do that with the course coupons down below, they are sleep well this week, because that's really what we're going for uh, this week. We want I want you all to sleep well with your investments. I want you to feel so confident and so happy in your long-term strategy uh, or short-term strategy, if it's options trading that you're doing, that the coupons this week are sleep well and they will expire on the 29th of May. And you might have seen that prices do change. So uh, don't hang about. Now, let me show you the first chart here. DD pre-market down 20%. It was a little worse earlier. It was 25% when I checked it at the beginning. But we have pretty substantial volume here now, 18.5 million. Uh, it was about 100 million or so on Friday. So this is 18% of the day's volume pre-market. That's not not to be sniffed at. So this is a uh, this is panic selling by probably largely retail investors because that's generally the people who trade pre market uh, and also in the first hour or two of the day and they are panicking a little bit. So we're going to look at what is this really all, all about? It should be panic or freak out uh, or not? Uh, let me just say uh, hello to a lot of you guys. Uh, Brock, just enough. Greg, Dimitris, uh, Roy, Paratrooper, August, uh, Shock City Rocker, MC, and Roti Boy, and Roy. Fantastic if you join us, guys. And I'd love you even more if you smash that like button and gave the YouTube algorithm a shove in my direction. I would truly appreciate that, guys. And I'll answer all of your questions. I'll give you a shout out as well if you write liked in the top chat here on the right. And if you are not in the chat, guys, it's because you're not subscribed. Just hit subscribe. Uh, it doesn't cost a thing. There's no fee, nothing at all. You just uh, chat uh, and, and you can ask me questions. Um, uh, Vengador, I, uh, you opened your position on Friday. Uh, sorry about that, Vengador. That is uh, not the most wonderful way to open the Monday morning. Uh, Adam, one of our lovely members, great to have you on the call. Stefan Martin, uh, 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 great to have you on here. And Roti Boy says, like for the goats. And guys, we're actually at the moment uh, voting for, and uh, we are picking the June sanctuary to donate to. Um, someone's found one that has lots of rescued large cats, and I'm talking lions in the US, that have been adopted out of unfortunate circumstances. So we, we might send the money there. Uh, if you want to vote on that, guys, jump over onto the Discord channel. Now, what is DD all about, really? I think we should do a quick recap for it's not everybody necessarily joined us yesterday. Uh, and we will also talk about Palantir and about Neo. Uh, Paratrooper, I hope you watched my video on the Palantir Microsoft partnership on from Saturday, I think it was. Uh, that sort of sums up that whole thing, but we can definitely talk about that. So we have two announcements here from the CAC, that's the Cyberspace Administration. And these are the original uh, texts I've just hit translate. I like to look at first-hand research. Uh, I don't like to uh, read something that CNBC told me. I'd much prefer to read the original and then I know whether it's been uh, embellished or not. And they're basically saying on Friday, uh, that's how they send us into the weekend, that um, to prevent basically data security risks, um, they implement a cybersecurity review uh, and uh, of DD to prevent the risks from expanding and DD Travel stopped new user registration during the review period. That was Friday. And we were like, oh, okay, that's not great. Uh, and then yesterday, Sunday, uh, the it was much worse because the Chinese government and the regulators, they work on Sundays when they do these things. If you followed me through the Alibaba investigation, you will remember that. They don't take the weekend off and I think uh, hats off to them for that. Uh, they said there is a serious, there are serious violations of laws and regulations in collecting and using, using personal information. And the State Internet Information Office, in accordance with the national security law, uh, notified the App Store to remove the DD Travel app and require DD Travel to strictly follow legal requirements and uh, follow national standards and rectify existing problems to protect personal information security of vast numbers of users. And actually, I hang on. Let me get my, my phone because I pulled the DD app earlier uh, up there, and you can still use it, which is is uh, the the good news. So. 
Um, actually, server too busy. But anyway, uh, here is the the this is the DD app. So it's still working. It's just loading uh, slowly, uh, and you can um, you can book cars with it. So that's that's the positive here. You can I can see a couple of little. Can you see that? It's flickering a little bit. I appreciate that. But you can see there are a couple of little, little cars floating around. So it works. Uh, at this point, there is no interruption of service. Uh, so the only thing really um, is that they can't sign up new customers. Now, is that a big deal in the short term? No, it really isn't a big deal in the short term because they already have signed up everybody who is living and breathing in mainland China. Pretty much everybody uses Didi. They have a 90% market share. So that isn't really the big issue here. The question is just how long does this last? How long do they take to resolve this? And what are the fines and consequences involved? And again, let's go into that. Let's go into the details here, guys. Um, uh, Christopher is asking a very sensible question about what does this mean for other Chinese tech stocks? Well, it's not the greatest advert, is it? So if you look at... Um, so guys, if you want to ask questions, just hit that subscribe button and you can you can ask questions. Look at the Chinese tech stocks here. Uh, Neo down 2%, Li, Xpeng, uh, Baba is down 1%, uh, JD is down, PDD is down. Uh, so, you know, you're telling me that this is all uh, Baidu is down. Everything Chinese is basically down. Ehang is down. Uh, so this is this is kind of what sort of irrationality looks like, uh, a little bit of panic uh, thrown into everything. So I think in the long run, this doesn't really matter all that much uh, unless you think that there will be these kind of data protection type investigations into all these companies. Some will be more affected by this than, than others. Um, you know, the sort of Baba, JD, or Meituan, or those kind of companies uh, are perhaps more at risk of another investigation. Um, I think for somebody like Neo. I mean, they do have a very successful big app, but I'm I'm hoping that they are a little bit more sensible with their regulatory compliance there than um, than DD is. And the issue generally st stems from the older tech giants in China. So the ones who started 10, 15 years ago and massively ballooned into these giants, they had no regulation. No one cared. No one looked at it. It was just, oh, do whatever you want to do, do it well, uh, grow the economy. Uh, that was very much the mantra. So they have a culture of let's just do whatever is, is good for the company. And that's the same with Alibaba or Tencent or any of those. So now that the regulation is catching up with standards that, I mean, from my point of view, are largely copied from, from uh, say, say, US or European re regulation, now they're getting stung, right? So they're suddenly waking up and going, oh my God, someone's looking at what we're doing and someone's looking at what we did five years ago. What were we doing five years ago? So that's a little bit the problem. Now for somebody, some of these new companies like Neo or Xpang, that's much less of an issue because they've only been around a couple of years. So they've had a less chance to kind of absorb that sort of uh, um, uh, sentiment. Um, uh, Mark is saying Palantir. Okay, we'll definitely talk about Palantir, Mark, in just a second here. I think just given what's happening with Didi, that something is down 21% that a lot of you guys have bought, uh, it's worth spending a little bit of time on this. Um, IT Technic is saying, is this going to be a long-term concern? Well, I mean, look at Alibaba, right? The investigation started at 24th of December and it still is a hangover. So that's a little bit the issue. And if you watched my video on the, I, I don't want to say I told you so, that's not my intention here, but if you watched my video pre-IPO, I, I actually said my concern here are the regulatory issues uh, that I think are going to crop up and that could uh, drag this on, you know, something on for six months or so. Um, Desmond saying it's panic and algo selling. Desmond, yeah, and I think I think you're right there. I don't think a 22% sell-off is rational. Do you think their business is going to be 22% smaller because of this? No, it isn't. And I'm going to show you what the fines are in a second as well. Um, uh, Isyanda is saying that they are still not profitable with a 90% market share in China, and they're hoping to expand, but that's harder to execute. And you're totally right. Um, and David, are you asking for a DCF on Mara and Path? You're not the only one asking for that, so let me write it down, uh, David. Uh, so DCF requests for, we've got Mara and Path, which is 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 some of the stuff that uh, Kathy's been buying of late, right? So let's have a quick look at 
um, okay, market overall, by the way, looking pretty good. I mean, Nasdaq futures are up. S&P is pretty much zero. Volatility is down. So nothing to panic about here. I think I also want to always get that across. Uh, my, the, the coupon for the courses is sleep well, guys. So I, I, want to, I want to contribute to that. Now, this is an interesting article here in that it spells out the, again, it's in Chinese, so I've hit translate, that it spells out the fines under the cybersecurity law. And it says that if a relevant uh, authority shall order the suspension of use and impose a purchase amount of more than a, a fine, um, it's 100,000 renminbi, and the person's in charge. So it's, it seems to me that there might be individuals who might also get fined, like management could get fined. But 100,000 renminbi, that's um, that's basically 15,000 US dollars. So it's, it's uh, I mean... Uh, uh, chump change, right? P petty cash for these guys. Uh, uh, so the actual fine from that investigation seems pretty minimal. Um, but I think the bigger issue is is sentiment. Uh, and also the um, uh, the ambulance chasers are already on there. Uh, here it says, Rosen Law Firm is preparing a class action lawsuit. Suit, and I'm sure there will be dozens and dozens of those uh, normally, when you go in here, uh, you see start to see them all. Okay, tomorrow when we look at this, uh, this whole uh, news list here on the side will be full of class action lawsuits. Uh, those guys are quick, so there's money in it for the lawyers. Uh, but um, does this really affect Didi's business? Okay, I mean these are the same questions we asked ourselves with Alibaba, right? Very different business. Though. Alibaba is highly profitable, amazing profit margins, growing very quickly, huge free cash flow, uh, and investing in things that are more profitable than their existing business, like cloud. Now, Didi is a 90% market shareholder. They are not making money, and they're expanding into things like grocery delivery uh, and, and logistics, which are it's very hard to make money in because they're exceptionally competitive. So, not quite the same position here, right? In terms of, of strength, where you say, well, it's a value business, forget about the noise, I wait two years and I'm going to do really well in a sort of, uh, you know, Charlie Manga type strategy. This is really not what's happening here. Uh, the whole thing is about continued growth. Uh, and if they are putting the, um, you know, irons on them, uh, it might dis at least distract them for some time, which wouldn't be particularly great. Uh, Fernando, another one of our beautiful members. Uh, thank you very much to, to, for joining. Um, uh, Fear Plate is saying, uh, okay, I'm going to read out the first part of that question is uh, why is Neo tanking? Uh, it's the DD sentiment. So because we have a, a essentially a privacy uh, type data protection type investigation into Didi. And it's not just an investigation. They've basically said right here that there are serious violations uh, of the law. Uh, this is uh, directly from the horse's mouth. Uh, and therefore, you know, it, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. I would say that they are going to get uh, somehow fined and, and more uh, highly regulated. My concern with these investigations is always, it's not the fine. No one cares about the fine. Uh, what this is all of the concern is that once they start digging into you, they start finding other things. You know, Didi's been around for some time. Uh, they've managed to get a 90% market share. Uh, so the question is just, have they done anything in the past that they shouldn't have done? And most businesses have. This is not bagging Didi. It's just anybody who's growing quickly at the speed that they have. Is somebody has probably done something that wasn't 100% kosher. So the problem is, therefore, you know, if you keep digging and digging, it's a bit like a tax audit, right? Uh, you, somebody always finds something. Uh, uh, Justin enough says, uh, Neo going down 2% pre-market is hardly tanking. I, I, I thank you for that. Thank you for calming us down a little bit there, Just enough. Uh, you're entirely right. Uh, you know, we had... We are below $50. We'd like to be above $50. We feel happier there. We sleep better there. But it is not. It's 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 an early morning sell-off on 800,000 shares traded. So uh, I really wouldn't lose sleep on this. Um, you know, our normal volume is about 80 million shares. Um, Wayne says that there will be lawsuits against the underwriters. DD was warned against listing. Yes, but if you read the S1, which I did, and I put, did a whole video on that, 
you know, it says exactly this sort of stuff in it. It says there are regulatory concerns. Uh, it is possible that the regulatory scenario might change. We might be subject to investigations. We might be subject to fines. It might be, you know, all that stuff. It's all in there because clever lawyers wrote it and they've covered their backside. Plus, we already knew in June that there is an antitrust investigation, right? And they got a fine for not filing a bit of paper. Very similar to what happened to Alibaba. The question with the antitrust investigation to me is if there's going to be another one that actually really says what you're doing right here, right now is um, abusing your dominant market position. That's really uh, the, the question here. Um, and Desmond is saying it's like opening a Pandora box. Exactly. You know, if you start digging, you, you tend to find something. So... Um, uh, Amro is hoping Neo goes down to the $30, $40 range. I, I, I don't really see it, Amro. I think the fundamental news on Neo is pretty good, so I, I don't really see that. Uh, and um, I, I, I will, I will, I've actually done a video just on that, which is going to come out later, where we can talk about Neo as well, guys. Uh, so ask questions, guys. That's what the whole pur pur purpose of this is. Otherwise, you can watch one of my videos. Uh, don't be shy. Um, uh, fear plate, uh, you're very kind. Thank you, guys. Uh, smash that like button, guys. You truly help me out. I really appreciate that. I'll shout you out as well if you write in the chat that you have liked. It makes such a difference to every single YouTuber, guys. You have no idea. It really makes a difference between people watching and people not watching. So you have the power with that little thumb there. It, it makes a great difference here. So uh, let's not stare at this pre-market screen the whole day. Now, surprisingly, ride is up a little bit. I, uh, I I don't understand it, to be honest with you. I would not be in ride. Uh, I, I like to take risks sometimes, but when your business is essentially on the verge of bankruptcy uh, and with all sorts of investigations going on, I would be very cautious here. Um, so at the moment, DD is still down with 23 million shares traded, which is a quarter of the trading volume of Friday. So there are some serious numbers of likely retail investors who are dumping here because they're scared. Uh, Roy uh, Bass, I'm number 44, go goats. Um, uh, what do you mean, Roy? <laughs> Any other China stocks that excite you, says Mark? I mean, I, I think the one that excites me the most at present is actually Neo. Uh, I, I really, really like it. And I'm going to show you why. We're going to switch over to a bit of Neo land for a moment here. I posted some of this on our Discord community earlier. Guys, you can get there if you want to through the Patreon. You want to get the news earlier and talk to us. Uh, there is a charge for it. It's 50 cents a day. And that's because we want to keep the community small uh, and sort of limited to people who are interested in proper research and discussions. And uh, here somebody actually shared today that XPang is also... Uh, opening in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. The Netherlands is going to be Europe's EV hub by the sounds of looks of it, look of it. Now, um, what is quite exciting about Neo is well, they're doing lots of very very smart marketing things. So the whole, you know, they have a 69% referral rate. 69% of their sales come from their customers, referring friends. And that's tremendous. And that's what they are building. And that's how they're scaling. And that's how they're doing it without a huge sales team and a lot of sales expense. And if you think about that, they so far only have three SUVs, which are a tiny part of the business, of, of the you know, automobile in the sector, once the sedans get going, this is going to really take off. Look at Xpang, cheaper cars. They sell three quarters of all the cars they sell are sedans, one third are SUVs. So Neo could sell three times as many sedans quite comfortably uh, as they're selling SUVs at present. So one of the fun things they're doing at the moment is if you bring uh, a, a lead, a friend uh, in to NEO for a test drive, you get a mystery box. And the mystery box uh, contains anything from some NEO points, um, which you can use to buy things with or, or, or you know, pay for charging. Uh, or there in 10 of the NEO mystery boxes, you get the right to choose the, a battery swap station location. So they're going to build a battery swap station where you choose if you are one of those 10 lucky people. And this really is all intended to get that user engagement, get people to bring leads and potential clients in the door for absolutely nothing, um, which is, I think, very, very uh, a clever way of doing it. Now, I imagine that they're going to give you some choices on the battery swap locations. You're not going to be able to put it right next to your home. Uh, I think there is some thought here to that, but it's just a little thing that they're doing that's very clever. And the other part that we, we should realize is the way they sell. So when you 
recommend somebody to buy a NEO and they do, you get about 180 US dollars in essentially NEO points. They also get 180 dollars in NEO points. And somehow, even though that's a relatively modest sum, that is incentivizing these relatively well-off people to haul their friends into NEO houses and make them buy NEOs because otherwise 69% of sales would not come from referrals. And this is not something that any tech brand or car brand has ever achieved anywhere in the world. There is no car company that's doing this. I mean, Apple isn't doing this, right? Apple doesn't send you messages and say, hey, get your friends to come and buy an iPhone or buy the subscription and I'll give you Apple points. It doesn't happen. Uh, they perhaps should do that. And where do they get this from? Well, it's kind of direct marketing, right? It's, it's the classic direct sales strategy of referrals, uh, which is incredibly clever and incredibly aggressive. And I absolutely love them for that. We also have, guys, the um, the biggest charging station ever. Uh, this is it. You're looking at it in all its glory. is a swap station and chargers. And again, I think it shows that it's not either or. Uh, the swapping and the charging works very, very well together. Uh, and, and that's, I think just kind of goes to show, I just wanted to show it to you because we've not never seen one this big before. I know we see them for Tesla all the time, but we haven't seen them for Neo. Um, now, the other part of the whole EV sector story is um, that they're basically hoarding cash and they're going to hoard more and more cash because the concerns that they have is that come 2023, there'll be more competition from all these new uh, joint venture brands, all the tech brands, you know, whether that's Alibaba or whoever else is deciding to make EVs. And therefore, they want to be well capitalized when that happens because they're slightly, I suppose there is some concern, A, of competition, and B, that uh, there will be, it might be a little harder to borrow because there'll be so many people borrowing at, that, at the same time. So uh, I will expect NEO to raise a lot more money in October when they do that Hong Kong IPO. Uh, that's the rumor. Uh, so I think it won't be the 5 to 7%. I think it'll be easily 10% plus. And I, I did a video on that called uh, NEO Dilution or something. And it, 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 it jolted some people. And I'm sorry about that. I wanted to please the algorithm and put out good content. The, the video isn't scary. Just the, 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 the thumbnail. It's, I, maybe I got a little bit carried away here. Um, so... Um, that is, uh, is, is therefore coming and that's something to bear in mind, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I think they're going to spend it wisely. So I'm not really concerned about that. Um, one thing I wanted to throw out guys, if you're not aware of that yet, you can get lots of free stuff on my website, guys. Uh, it's goatacademy.org. Uh, if you sign up for, if you just take the quiz, I'll send you information specific to what you've answered uh, and you can unsubscribe that from that on any time i will never ever spam you i will never ever sell your data uh, uh, you can also get free tools including a free mini course uh, on on stock trading up, up here so just click on that and of course if you are uh, minded to invest in your uh, investing abilities uh, then of course i highly recommend the courses guys and take a note of the coupons down below it's sleep well because that's how i want you to feel after you've done your investments i don't want you to be clinging to tickers i want you to be confident that you've made the right choices uh, and therefore you can uh, go and rest easy now let's have a quick look if pre-market has calmed down at all um quite the opposite actually we're down 23 percent now so we started off at minus 25 percent we went to about 20 now we're at 23 percent on still pretty substantial volume here um Hit that like button, says Hans. The furry creatures will be smiling at that too, guys. For every one of your likes, I donate one cent to animal sanctuaries. And we should be around about a thousand seventeen hundred US dollars, one thousand seven hundred US dollars uh, when I make that uh, donation tomorrow. Um, why is Tiger tanking 10%? Um, good question, actually. Very good question. I did see that here. Just where is, is Tiger? I mean, it is... I'm, I'm sure part of that is the whole Chinese side of um, the investi investigation. Uh, let me see if we got any news up here on that. Um, no, they strengthened Singapore, uh, higher pre-market, uh, approval in principle. No, hasn't got anything out here. I haven't seen anything about that in the press this morning. I also scoured some of the Chinese sites. I did not see anything on that, uh, why that might be. Is it just profit taking? I, I I don't know. I mean, we. It's it is fairly substantial, ten percent down, uh, for no particular reason. Uh, I, I absolutely no idea, to be honest with you. Hopefully, we'll find out uh, during the day. Has anyone tried to Google it? Uh, tiger stock. 
see if there is anything given no recent update let's look in the last hour uh, this is just one of those roundups from investing.com and this is just numbers it doesn't tell us why so no absolutely no idea if anybody does find out uh, do share with us please uh, that makes the community smarter uh, uh cyrus good morning to you too uh angel um thank you very much how do you feel about byd i think byd is a good company i think it's overlooked i think it's a solid company i think it's a solid business i think they are going to do well is it the shiniest leading brand in the market no uh, therefore they will be slightly behind neo i'd say but they have benefited tremendously from tesla's success in china it's taken that long for people to actually realize who byd really is so it's a little bit of a of a, of a dark horse i think um desmond saying tiger stock moves like that quite volatile but pre-market 10 percent, desmond really I, I know it's i mean look at the chart it's it's you know nine percent down and then it's three four five percent uh, eight percent down 16 percent down okay it does have these massive swing days uh, 11 percent up uh, so yeah you, you are quite right desmond actually it does move absolutely erratically uh, it could be a really nice uh, options trade i've never looked at that actually for um because the volatility is insane which can be can be very nice uh, a nice straddle or something um uh, chris is asking are we going to live stream the tesla earnings call uh, well, let me see what time it is if it is five o'clock in the morning my time then i probably won't do it and that's generally where they are when they are five or six in the morning and you know what there's something weird about the youtube algorithm whenever i do a tesla video it absolutely hates it and my next five videos don't get shown to anybody i don't know why it just seems to think that felix and tesla don't go together i do listen to the earnings calls and i do watch it uh, but for some reason it really doesn't like it but i'll have a look at what time that is um uh, eric says should i panic and sell all my dd now um, i mean i think eric your question probably answers that for you is panic the sensible thing to do normally the market overreacts right i mean okay let me show you let me show you baba so when i woke up on christmas eve uh, last year well 2020 not all that long ago this is what i was faced with you see that great great big red arrow uh, we were down 13 percent that day uh, and we went from 230 basically to 211 just like that in, in the opening of the bell uh, and if you'd sold there well you would have lost a lot of money and then it recovered uh, quite substantially pretty much exactly to where we started we went back up into the 250s 260s that would have been a great point to get out and i think with dd the lesson might be the same perhaps is that it once once this blows out over uh, I, I would i would i, I didn't buy it um, if you watched my 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 ipo pre-ipo coverage you, you might understand why because i was worried about regulatory stuff i didn't want my money tied up for ages um i would and you have to make your own decisions as always guys always check your own facts uh, i would sit this out a little bit and see if we get a pullback because it's a very very heavy reaction to something that at this point might end up in a fifteen thousand dollar fine so if that's the case you might be able to save yourself quite a bit of money oh sorry guys sorry i didn't share my screen all right okay uh, guilty as uh, as charged once again okay you see where the red arrow is here right uh, that was the sell-off of um the 24th of december and we went from as i said from uh, 230 to uh to 2 to 11 uh, that day uh, and that was 13 percent uh, down it was just which was pretty pretty significant uh, now you can see we went all the way back up right to basically where we started so uh, actually had one exited here uh, one would have made quite a nice profit could have waited and then gotten in later uh, when things were cheaper again and then you know taking advantage of perhaps a future rally here um, thanks guys the dd app is suspended um, no oliver that's quite wrong uh, apologies to correct you there but the dd app is working and i'll show it to you because i've got it right here and now and now i'm in hong kong so my dd app is actually in english uh, but it is the same app and you can see here 
you can see it right here. Let me see if that focuses. There it is. You can see the little cars moving around and that I'm in Hong Kong. And this is the DD app. So it's the, the app is 100% working. Uh, their users are not having any interference with their servers and they will have not any issues with the revenue coming in. None of that's the issue. They are suspended in the app stores. So I can't go into the Chinese app stores and download it. That's the only thing that's happening here. So is that a big deal if you already have a 90% market share? Temporarily, no. It's just sort of a warning. That's what they can do, but they have not suspended operations. And I think it's important to understand the difference here. Um, Avatar is saying, are we going to see Neo swapping stations in Europe? Um, yes. So we are going to have the first ones in September. I believe the first one's shipped already. So it might even be before September in Oslo. And there are going to be five or six extra ones just in Norway. So yes, they will roll that out all across Europe. Um, uh, and Alan is saying, again, look at the o market overreaction to Peloton. Yeah, I mean, the market overreacts. So if you jump out at the bottom, you tend to be not do that you know there are these lovely charts um let me show you this it's actually in my course i also have one of those uh, let me let me just find it for you um one second uh, i just want to illustrate how how this works that's it's really important to understand that uh, let me just scroll down here quickly um, if you understand a little bit about market psychology then you understand when to trade and when not to trade with or against the market. And let me just see if I can find, there is this lovely image in here somewhere. Hmm. Okay, I think it might be this one. Um, so the market always overreacts. It's just a given. Oh, I don't know. I can't seem to find it right, right here and now. Okay, anyway, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the um, market goes into, into fear and into panic. And that's actually the best time to buy. Now, would I necessarily buy a stock just because it is down? No, uh, I would certainly not. But if you are bullish on Didi and you think it's the greatest business model in the world, just like you think you might think Uber is fantastic or Airbnb is fantastic, then buying 24% lower is probably not such a bad idea. Uh, or you could wait a little bit for it to turn around and then uh, see if there's actually momentum back out of it uh, rather than buying something that's a slide up. Um, can we go over the Neo's charts? Uh, Kevin, absolutely, we could do that. Neo chart down. Uh, you bet on the wrong team, uh, says Fairblade. Okay, you're a, you a Tesla bull, I, I take it. Um, uh, and Simon, you're absolutely right. The DD app is still working. Um, and can we go over the Neo chart? Uh, Kevin is rather insistent here. Um, uh, um, Chris thinks we're going to get to over 700 people. Uh, not people. Um, if you, if all of you guys smash that like button, though, we will get to over 700 people in this chat. Uh, in which case, I will do answer more questions and I will do longer uh, live streams because the more of you are on here, uh, the, the more sense it makes. Uh, right, so why don't we do that? Why don't we look at Neo here? And um, we'll then talk about Palantir, guys, as well. Uh, we will talk about that. I've also recorded a separate Palantir video, which is going to go out after this one. So the market's now open, and Neo is down just 1%. So, see, don't take, look at, you know, don't take the pre-market stuff too seriously. Down 1% doesn't really mean very much. Uh, now, where do we have support? Uh, well, 48.50 is, is, is good support because, let me make this a little bit bigger for you. If you can see yesterday, or Friday rather, the bottom of that tail here where my cursor is, and then three days before that also, they are both pretty much the low points where 48.50 or 48.54. So that's pretty good support levels. I actually don't think we're going to necessarily go down that low. Uh, I think this is just a little bit of a mini correction. Um, it would take a lot of fear mongering and panic if um, you know the, the US media really goes into overdrive like they did with Alibaba. Uh, we might see a little bit of a sentiment uh, pinch on the whole uh, Chinese ADR sector. Uh, in, in which case, you know, there might be some nice buying opportunities in there. But at the moment, you know, we are down a little bit, but not all that much. 1.1%. Uh, Let's have a look at the, uh, by the second one here. So um, DD is still down. Uh, so, okay, that's extended hours. 
DV is still down almost 25% here. That's just, I mean, that's just panic. And sometimes when everyone's selling, more people sell, right? They're like, oh my God, I can't handle 25%. When you get to sort of 25, 30%, a lot of people flip in their mind and they think, I need to get out. I can't afford to lose this money. Um, and that's, in, in a way, the wrong, I, I would say it's the wrong thing to do. I mean, not for everybody. Uh, sleeping and mental stability is more important. I totally appreciate that. Uh, but it does seem like an overreaction, even though the volume's huge, but it's it's a very, very big negative one here uh, at the moment. We're going to revisit that DD in a little while. It's only been two minutes into the trading day, so it doesn't tell us all that much. Uh, George, thank you very much for that big, big like. Truly appreciate it. Um, Hans says it's a better day to sell puts on Neo than on Friday. Um, it, it might well be Hans. Uh, have a look at uh, at the uh, returns on that one. Um, just enough. Bought some Neo. Uh, easy money. Uh, what's the huge Palantir rumor? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll I'll talk about that. Uh, let's do a little bit about Palantir. I actually did a video on this, which is going to come out uh, after. Uh, but okay. Everyone's been rumoring about, uh, you know, is is Palantir working with Facebook or not? And I just thought, why don't I do a little bit of digging on this? Why don't I do a, a bit more uh, uh, thorough, thorough search on this? And where most people end up, most people see these job ads, which are still out and invalid, security engineer, and they're looking for people um, to basically protect Facebook users uh, who are investigators to detect detect and track adversary groups. So uh, they're looking for people that are all, all sorts, criminals, um, uh, terrorists, uh, you know, uh, pedophiles, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and they are looking for people, um, you know, the, the point is to basically reduce harm and protect people from abuse. And then they are looking at people with proven experience for large-scale data analysis and using big data tools, including Palantir. Now, this could, could mean yes or no, yes or no. It didn't really satisfy me. Uh, but they're also, you know, they want sophisticated criminal or nation-state threats. So this is, it falls in the sort of Palantir territory. You think, okay, yeah, sort of, but uh, does it really tick the box to say that they're working together? For me, no. It's a possible, but not a yes. But uh, let's go um, some more. Gregory, thank you very much. Appreciate your your hearts and your likes, guys. Uh, keep smashing that like button, guys. And I will uh, keep uh, divulging uh, this, this Palantir rumor. So this chap here, Brian F., serious-looking fella, he is the director of counterterrorism in dangerous organizations at Facebook. Now, I don't think they have dangerous organizations within Facebook, so I think he's trying to keep them out. And he's based at Menlo Park, which is also where Facebook AI is based. Um, uh, so it's kind of where the smart people are based. And guess what? He joined in 2016. Before that, he wrote a book on ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And before that, he was at Palantir for two years and 10 months, which is a not insignificant period of time. And he uh, was responsible for basically um, uh, hooking up disaster response programs for nonprofits and worked with the Clinton Initiative, the Rocket FLF Foundation. So two years and 10 months is a, a period. If you are at Palantir, you are you are a Palantarian or Palantirian or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and then he took a year off. That could have been gardening leaf or he just wanted to write a book. Uh, and then he joined Facebook and he's been there now for five years. Now, so that kind of makes me think, okay, that's a pretty good connection. The guy in charge of, you know, managing dangerous organizations on Facebook is a, an ex-Palantir guy. And I've not seen this on anything, honestly. I watched every single uh, video on Palantir and Facebook, and the best ones are, are done by Tom, um, who's done some done a pretty good job, but he didn't seem to have found this. I, I don't know why. Uh, maybe he, does, he wasn't looking on LinkedIn. Now, then I found this chap here. Daniel Fletcher, who's a product manager at Facebook. And guess what? He was a deployment strategist at, at Palantir. And deployment strategists are the guys who set up new customers. And we've seen this before, that the deployment strategist gets hired by the customer. BMW, for example, is a case in point. And why? Because the deployment strategist spends a year, perhaps, with the client at the client's offices. And installs and sets it up and, and, and connects everything and makes sure the client is happy. And by that point, if you're then the customer, like BMW, you're like, okay, he's not going to leave because we set up, but we still need somebody to like manage this 
How about we just hire the guy? You call Palantir and say, do you mind if we steal one of your staff? And they go, no, we're absolutely delighted that you do because it gives you that connection point. It's like law firms, right? Law firms love it if their biggest clients steal one of their lawyers. Absolutely love it because it just builds that relationship. Uh, so he was there until October 2017. So watch that date, right? Now, Brian joined Facebook in April 2016. Uh, so basically, four months later, this deployment strategy uh, strategist started working at, at Palantir. He was there for about a year and then he moved to Facebook, right? So for me, that's pointing much more in the direction that we have two people here from Palantir who joined roughly at the same time. Why would they do that? Because there's actually a need for Facebook to hire these people. Now, why would Facebook do this? Well, Two reasons. They are between a rock and a hard place. Now, they are, they are customers, but half of them would not like them to use Palantir, right? For political reasons. They don't want to uh, deal with these big data companies. They don't want to deal with somebody who supplies the Department of Defense or ICE or any of this. So Facebook is not in that government sector, right? On the other hand, the government is putting pressure on them and saying, if you let people organize, you know, criminal activity, terrorism, um, you know, child abuse on your platform, we're going to come after you. So you're going to have to make sure you, that doesn't happen. Now, how do you do that? Well, Palantir could do that because it could actually manage all your data. So what it says to me is that Facebook, with all the smart people they have, kind of thought we could build this ourselves. Actually, we can't. It's just going to take us too long, if, even if we could. So we have to buy it in. So why don't we hire some people from Palantir and we keep this contract quiet, very stum, very quiet, and that way nobody will ever find out. And if anybody ever does find out, we're saying, okay, we're not using Palantir for the sort of Cambridge Analytics type stuff. No, 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 no that's not us. We are using it to prevent, uh, you know, child abuse, terrorism, uh, those kind of things, which quite frankly, nobody could really um, object to. So my take on doing quite a bit of digging on here, and there are also lots of rumors out on, you know, somebody knows somebody works at Facebook and they say someone's using it there. I think they are using it. I think they'll never admit to it. And what does that mean for us as shareholders? Well, it means that, okay, we're not going to get extra revenue because they've already been paying Palantir since 2017 or so, 2016 perhaps even. Uh, so what it does mean though is that Facebook, one of the real tech giants, says Palantir is the, the best in class and there is no one else to go to. Because if there was somebody else to go to who could do it, they would have done that. Because for them, the potential reputational damage of working with Palantir is fairly significant. And I know a lot of us guys here uh, you know, like Palantir and we don't care about that politics, but a lot of people do. And I think we have to acknowledge that. So for me, that's actually a very positive story. It's just not one that's ever going to come out. Uh, but I think so, it's so far that we have some facts, uh, that's basically what they are. So you can make of it uh, uh, as you will. Um, uh, Chris Jones is saying um, uh, YouTube is threatening to delete loads of investment channels such as Graham Stefan. Yeah, I, I, I watch that. I, I love Graham Stefan. He's a very entertaining chap and um, Kevin and all of that a lot uh, as well. I, I very much hope that doesn't happen. It would be a huge loss. There is something, I mean, the algorithm is fantastic, right? It got you here, which I truly appreciate. And if you want to make an impact with the algorithm, you hit that like button. Um, and it is beautiful for that because it suggests content to you that you might enjoy, even if you, did, if you didn't know it existed. Uh, but it does, of course, also concentrate all the power in one sort of place. And they have a, a lot of that power. So um, that's part of the reason also why I love our um, Discord channel, guys, because we have another sort of area where we can talk and where we are independent and we can talk about things that perhaps are not the most popular thing according to the algorithm. And the live chats here too, because here we can uh, yabber about anything and I can answer any of your questions no matter uh, what you're talking about. So um, uh, look at new Bank and Lee says DOV. Uh, well, they are basically going back to zero, right? So uh, people are shaking off that morning fear, uh, which is good to see because Neo X Peng and Lee are having a really good time. So why would they be down? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, Baba a little bit more impacted. PDD also 
Um, Luke Wong, again, down 10%. But those stocks are very volatile anyway. So I don't think that is really much of an indicator here. Um, what's up today? Let's have a quick look. What's actually up here? Uh, Square, Amazon, uh, right? I don't comp comprehend that one. Apple up a bit, Google. So kind of the, the, the kind of conservative stuff. Palantir up half a percent. Uh, that's very nice to see. So maybe people have been watching my Microsoft video over the weekend, guys. And if you haven't seen that yet, or if you do have, uh, go to it and leave a comment or like it or share it with somebody so we can spread that news because I think it is real news. It's just the media hasn't really picked it up yet. Um, Ahmed is saying, should I sell Baba? Look, I think if you look at the long-term value investors, they're piling into Baba, right? Because they see the value and that's perhaps why you bought it. They see the, the value there. They see that it's cheap. Uh, but you have to have the time frame for it. I mean, say you think that Baba will go up, you know, 30%, 50% over the next 80 months or 24 months. The question is the opportunity cost. Could you put that money somewhere else where you would perhaps get that return sooner or perhaps more of a return? That's always what I ask myself. So I always think if I'm going to buy, say, a new stock, I think, well, my core portfolio is doing maybe 18% over the last eight, nine years on average. Um, that compounds very nicely. So say, even if it only does 11%, 14%, can this new stock guarantee me that? That's sort of the way I look at it. And that kind of sets the, the bar a little bit higher for research. Speaking of research, guys, do your own research. And for that, I highly recommend, especially the Master Stocks course for uh, understanding how to invest, how to make discounted cash flow models, how to do technical chart analysis and everything in between and have a long lasting strategy for making money. And if you want to trade, if you want to buy and sell stocks uh, within uh, days or weeks of buying that, uh, don't do it with stocks, do it with options. It's the much, much smarter way of doing it. And if you don't understand options, which most people do, I teach you the whole thing uh, down below. So take a note of those coupon codes, guys. They are 29% off and they will expire at the end of the week. Now, if you have any questions, uh, do shout them out. Now is a, is a good one. Um, George is saying uh, Baba might turn around later in the afternoon. Entirely possible. I mean, the first 15 minutes of the trading day uh, do not make the day. So it is basically largely retail investors early in the morning. Um, Dov is asking about graphene technology. Should I invest in this? My thoughts on technology are generally, if I can't understand the technology, I don't invest in it. So do you understand graphene and the advantages over other materials, other technologies? Uh, if, that, is that, if that's your field of work or, or research interest, then, then, then by all means uh, do. You know something that we don't. Um, but that's the challenge with tech or with mining or anything like that. If we don't understand it, then it is actually quite a hard one to to understand to to invest in. Uh, we have a lovely community on our Discord channel here um, for all the EV raw materials, for example, uh, for all the um, you know whether it's lithium or uh, uh, battery metals and mining and all these things. And um, we have somebody here who is incredibly dedicated to doing the research. Uh, so if you have somebody like that, then you can also take advantage of that. Um, Luke is saying 12 months Palantir price target. Okay, let me share that with you. Let me go to the Patreon page. Uh, there we go. And I'll, I'll show you the DCF I have for Palantir. So if you go on here, you click on Palantir, uh, and then you get that DCF. And I also teach you how to make these guys, by the way. Uh, and at the moment, it's at $77. Uh, is that year end? No, that's probably more early to middle next year. Uh, and why is that? Because we need more quarters with more growth and more private clients, it's getting more customers, more diversification. Not for me, but to convince Wall Street and the rest of the world. And given that it takes at present, say, six months to sign up a client, uh, there is... Um, uh, Bloomberg is now caught on. You can see that down here. They've caught on to DD as well. Uh, they're only about uh, two hours late to the party. Uh, and so I think it, it'll take a little bit of time to convince the mass masses of Wall Street that Palantir is truly the fantastic business it is. And once they have put out some of those quarter numbers with that growth and those new customers, then Wall Street will start looking at the technology. At the moment, they just aren't. So I don't think uh, they really understand it yet. 
Glenn is saying, so far is down again. I think that whole sector is having a little bit of... Do we have it on here? No, strangely not, actually. Uh, I, I think the whole sector is having a bit of a challenge with, uh, you know, all the investigations into, uh, you know, into everything that everybody's been doing, basically. Uh, I think that is... It. So, you know, there is... If, if Robin Hood is having a bit of a, a challenging time, it also affects everybody else, which in a way doesn't make sense. In a way, you'd think it would benefit the competitors, but typically sectors get hit uh, as a whole. Let me just see if we can uh, load this one up here again. At the moment, it's loading very slowly. I don't know why. Um, uh, Desmond says uh, Bloomberg needed to exit their position. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't think Bloomberg actually worked like that, but they wake up, they go to the office, and then they write it, uh, whereas we've been awake here for a while. Marcus, good morning to you too. Um... So let's have a quick look if we can see uh, SoFi here now. SoFi, it's down 1.6%. I mean, it's nothing too dramatic. But yeah, it's not quite the performer that we want to get, is it? Uh, Luke's asking, what are your top three stock picks right now? It very much depends on what's already in your portfolio, and it very much depends on well, your time frame. Um, so I buy every month or several times a month in my core portfolio and that's things like paypal and microsoft and a sort of you know reliable uh, core stocks that just grow very nicely perform very nicely great margins a great free cash flow and i'm going to do that again today actually i'm, I'm going to i'm going to buy some more um in terms of the growth stocks, for me, that's kind of a separate portfolio. I know my core stuff is going to perform as it will, and I, I know what that trajectory is uh, 10, 20 years out. Uh, for the growth stocks, I then look for things that I think will outperform that portfolio significantly. Uh, so I, I'm still a big fan of NEO. Uh, I think Palantir needs patience. I think it's a fantastic technology, but I do think it still needs quite a bit of patience. Um, in the whole EV space, I think... Uh, Tesla and Neo for me are at the moment the ones to watch. There are some others that are not yet listed that will be very interesting, like Polestar, for example. But as I say, they're not yet listed, so not accessible to most people. Uh, so that's probably what I... It really depends on, let's I say, you know, who you are, your horizon, what your risk is, what your intention is. And if you want to understand a little bit more about my, my thinking on that, uh, then literally go on my website and it's 100% utterly, butterly free. And start that quiz or uh, uh, click on free tools and, and take, uh, take that free mini, mini stock course. And you get a little bit more of a feel for what it is that I, I think is a smart thing to do that builds you long lasting growth each year, every year, and makes you an absolute fortune over time. Um, Gregory is saying Neo. Greg is saying Palantir. Uh, Neo will reach 75 soon, says Gregory. We very much hope so. Uh, CH, uh, great to have you on the chat. Uh, huge welcome to you. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, shout them out. Now is the time. Uh, and as you ask a question, uh, you have to, I have to like, hit the like button. Otherwise, I won't answer you. Not that I will know, but I, 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 I trust you. So let's do a quick recap on just what we're talking about here with... Um, Didi. So with Didi, the story is on Friday, we had the announcement that the app was basically, well, no, let me get this straight. On Friday, the regulator said that Neo could, sorry, Didi could not sign up new customers. On Sunday, they have removed the app from the app stores. Now, you can still use DD, and I've just shown it to you because that's a big misunderstanding here. Um, here's the DD app, uh, and you can see it works. Um, you can might even be able to see a few cars on there. Here, here, here there are some. So there, there are a couple of cars floating around on that. Can you set does that focus? Yeah, there it is. Right. So you can see it, 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 it is working. So DD customers are, are basically not noticing any interruption whatsoever. But they did say on Sunday that DD has serious breaches of essentially data protection laws, and they need to rectify that. Now, it looks like the maximum fine for that is $15,000 for the company and possibly $15,000 for, for management, which, quite frankly, no one cares about. So that isn't really the issue. The, the market, I think, is overreacting. Uh, but when we look at the Alibaba story, which is only seven, eight months old, 
one investigation led into the next one. And with Didi, we had an antitrust investigation in June. They got fined for not filing some paperwork um, for some old M&A activity, very uh, similar to Alibaba. And then now this has led into this data protection issue. Is it going to lead into another investigation? It could be another you know, antitrust or something else. So that's sort of my concern with it, that this might drag on and it might be a drag on the stock for, say, six months or eight months, as it has been with Alibaba. So that's, I think, the risk. I don't think that DD should be beaten over the head 25% down. I don't think that's a rational uh, reaction by the market. Uh, and I think there will be a bit of a bounce back here. At the moment, we are down 22%. Um, but, you know, that's that's the market. And especially early in the mornings, it is uh, retail investors particularly who are rattled by what they've read over the weekend. So they are getting out. Um, uh, Eric is asking which brokerages I use. I use a bunch uh, for different things. Um, I use one. Actually, I use a bit of Weeble. I use um, a bit of of uh, TD Americas, I use, but their fees are not the greatest, but sometimes for options it's good, uh, because Webull is a little bit restrictive with what you can do with options. Uh, I also use a Swiss broker, which I think is very good, and it can give me access to absolutely everything listed anywhere in the world. So um, if you if you want some advice, Eric, send me a, send me a message um, if you have a particular thing you're looking for. Um, um, what do I think of IBKR? Yeah, I, I tried it. I actually signed up for it. I put some money into it, bought some things, and then I, I I closed it. I found it tedious. I found it irritating. I didn't like how they handled foreign currency. I didn't like uh, how hard it is to get money in and out of it. I didn't like the platform. I, I thought it was hard to manage and view. And I think also they don't really show you very well of like, how things are going. It's almost like they just want to get your money and hide it. That's sort of how I felt. I, I didn't think it was. It felt particularly transparent. So no, I'm not a huge fan of that platform. Uh, but, um, you know, everybody has a preference. Uh, so uh, no, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of that particular one. Uh, there is, I think, a little bit of an issue with the no commission ones to some extent. They're all front running, but then it's not just them. I think a lot of brokerages are doing that. Um, Desmond thinks the, the IBKR platform is very dated. Yeah, it feels like that. I mean, actually, let me see. I've got Webull open here, for example. So let me show you. So this is Webull, for example. So if I open up, say, uh, Space or something, and look, if I want to do some options trading and say I want to do uh, you know, something interesting, which is, um, say, you know, it, it, something like a trade like this, where I have four legs of options, Look how beautiful that that is. I mean, I know Think or Swim does it really pretty pretty well as well. But for me, this is just so easy. It tells me the premium. It tells me my maximum loss, my maximum profit. It tells me exactly visual where all the trades are positioned. And I don't have to look at this because this is what most platforms show you. They show you this kind of a thing. And it's just like a headache, right? So I love how visually they're, they're doing that. Um, you can't execute some options trade on this one particularly easily. Uh, so think or swim is a little bit more flexible there still, but I actually quite like Weeble. It's kind of growing on me. I think it's it's just, it's intended to make it easy and that's a good thing. I'm a fan of dumbing things down. Uh, why make something complicated if you can make it easy, right? Um, Roti Boy says, look into Tastyworks as a broker. Okay, I haven't looked at that one yet. Uh, Eric says you're looking for fractional stocks. Okay, so then you have to kind of go for one of the sort of newer ones. I mean, IBKR does it, uh, Webull does it. Uh, they, they all do that. And it's a, for that, it's a very smart thing to do. I, I, I love the fractional stock ideas because then you can say, I'm going to put $50 or $500 or $5 million or whatever it is every month. But, you know, you can do the fractional stocks thing that way. And I think that's a, a very good way of doing it. I, I highly recommend that. Um uh, getting paid for order flow is a scam and only scam companies do it, says Investry. Uh, true, but a lot of them do. I mean, that's that's part of the problem. It isn't just the apps. It's a lot of them that do that. Uh, but I, I agree with you there. It's not the way to do it. So that uh, IPO coming up for Robin Hood, uh, I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> just to say that up front. Uh, you, you don't have to watch the video if I do do one on that. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan. Uh, if, if that's the sort of company culture, then I, I'm not really there. 
Um, uh, that is much better than IBKR. IBKR is like reading the Rosetta Stone. Okay, you're talking about Weeble, right? Yeah, I think I think Weeble is 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 getting there. I think they are. It, it is very visual. Um, there are still some things that, for example, Think or Swim does, like paper trading, which is absolutely absolutely fantastic. Uh, I can show you that too. Hang on, let me let me pull that up here. I'll pull that up for you one sec. Let me just see if I can log into that because that is that really is quite tremendous and you can actually do that without signing up you literally just sign in, in into the the first page of of the sign up and then you don't give them any information you give them no documents and no id no verification and i asked them this and they said to me yeah you can do that you can still paper trade and uh, here it is so you click on paper money and then you can do options trading for example on paper money which is just fantastic super cool so say uh, you want to do, um, you know, an, an Uber trade. You just click on options trade. Um, you know, you can select a strategy here, an iron corridor or whatever, and then it pulls it all up. So it does give you also the visuals down here, which I think are nice. I They're a little bit, you know, it takes a little bit getting used to. It's a little bit like in the 1990s want their charts back. But it is, it's, it's, it's not bad. It, it, it really isn't. It's not bad. So uh, I, I think they are doing a pretty decent job here. It's just, it just feels like they've taken an old 90s software and they've upgraded it. So uh, that's a little bit the, 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 the handling of that one. Um, Uh, investory says so i trade at the bank simple well actually there is another one i i, I use a um, if you i don't know if you're based in europe if you're based in north america you can't use it but if you're based in europe uh, or in asia for that matter swiss quote is a pretty good one i think but they don't have fractional shares so um luke is saying what do you think of nicola motors um Luke, not a fan. For me, it falls into the same territory as Ride, not a fan. When you have these things happening uh, at companies, I always think there are so many stocks out there. Why go for the ones with that sort of baggage? Um, uh, Investory, you are, you are sorry. I don't know what you're sorry for, so it's quite all right. Uh, I, I, I forget things, <laughs> so uh, don't worry about it. Appreciate you uh, joining in. Um, Roti says bank fees are ridiculous. Well, that is something that is going to get fixed, I think. And I think the whole blockchain thing is going to fix that. Uh, so um, foreign brokers can be better, absolutely. Uh, it depends on where you are based. For example, most European banks charge exorbitant fees. So it is better to use some of these new online banks. Um <laughs> Tessman says, when you need to roll your semi down a hill. Is that a Nicola comment, is it? Um, uh, they haven't delivered a single car yet, uh, says Eric. I mean, I think it's like, like right. I think in their inventory, I think they have one or two cars, which is slightly worrying when you are a car manufacturer. So I, I don't really get it. But when I looked at this earlier, Ride was up. Uh, yeah, Ride is up 2%. Uh, I, I don't know why people do that. I, I think it's sort of people form an emotional attachment, perhaps, uh, or they're just hoping to make a big buck and maybe somebody will come in and... and I capitalize them again, but it won't be me. So um, I, I, I am not a fan of those things. Fudi <laughs> um, um, is saying, what's your take on trading bots? So yeah, I'm, I'm still experimenting with one. And that's actually why I signed up to IBKKR large, largely, because they worked with one of the trading bot sites. Uh, I can't think of the top of my head what it was. Um <laughs> It's good sometimes, and then you have long periods of time where it doesn't do anything. So I think the challenge is to create strategies where you can trade all the time, a lot. So you have to kind of come up with very, very sensitive um, parameters to make a trade all the time. Because if it only trades every eight weeks and it makes $55, it's it's a bit of a waste of time. Um uh, Jackson, oh, great to have you on the call here. Uh, I haven't been on your live streams in a while. Uh, fantastic to have you back. We've been live pretty much every day, so we'll be back here tomorrow, same time, same place as well. Uh, so do always join that. Uh, have I commented on the Palantir rumor? Yes. So I was talking about the Facebook deal. And to uh, sum it up briefly, uh, there are two former Palantir staff working at Facebook. And one is the head of their sort of counter-terrorism uh, department. Uh, and the other is um, a chap who used to work at Palantir 
uh, setting up new customers. And if you look at the timeline there, I think it coincides quite nicely. I think Facebook has been using Palantir since 2017. Uh, that's my conclusion on that. But I put out a more detailed video on that uh, after the call so you can watch it in all its uh, uh, gory and glory. Um, Articom is saying, where would you trade so the fees don't eat you up? So the first thing I would always do with a brokerage is go with a fine tooth comb through their fees and then bother their support with questions about their fees because you really want to understand how they charge, for what sizes of trades they charge, so you can make smart things. For example, I have a brokerage in Switzerland, and if I invest uh, zero to a thousand dollars, they charge me, I don't know, uh, $20 or something like that. If I invest a thousand to 10,000, they charge me $30. So, does it make sense to invest $1,005? No, absolutely not. Uh, does it make sense to invest $9,999? Yep, it does. And then it jumps again when you go from $10,000 to $20,000 or $50,000 or something like that. So again, I would never make a trade that's close to the $10,000 mark, but above it because I'm throwing money away. Okay, I'm only throwing $10 away, but if I do this, uh, you know, 50 times a year, you know, then it does really add up. So um, super important. Fees are one of the key things. And if you want to understand that a little bit more, guys, uh, if you go on my website here and the link is, I put it in the chat here, it's go to academy.org. It's 100% free. I'm not selling you anything here. Click on free tools and just sign up for that mini stocks course here. You put your email in and your name in and you're done. You get it straight away. And if you don't want to get emails from me, you hit one button and you'll never hear from me ever again and I will never ever sell your data, guys. So you get actual lectures from my stocks course there. And, and, and one of those, this talks about fees and the importance of that and how that really mounts up. So fees is a much overlooked thing that really differentiates success from averageness so you really have to spend some time on that it's not fun it's tedious but it's super important to do so i really recommend you do that and that's also why i use different brokerages because some things are cheaper on some than on others so it is important to do um, or i get benefits through currency conversion and, and, and that sort of type thing so it's super important to do guys if you do want to get into something a little bit more uh, uh with a bit more bite, guys, check out the courses down below. The Master Stocks course teaches you how to build long-lasting wealth, how to do your own discounted cash flow models, how to do technical analysis. Basically, everything I do and I show you in the videos and the lives is down in that in that course. So take advantage of that coupon, 29% off. And if you are somebody who regularly buys and sells stocks for profit, for trading, you want to earn some passive income from trading, I would say don't do it with stocks. Uh, I would do it with options, which is what I do. Uh, and I teach you options trading from scratch. If you know nothing, it gets you there. If you know something, I'll get you to the next level. Uh, so check those out, guys. And I truly appreciate you joining in. I truly appreciate you subscribing. Uh, all you guys, I pretty appreciate you guys liking and building this community. It makes um, it hugely fun. Otherwise, it would just be me, wouldn't it? Uh, talking to myself or my cats. You've strangely abandoned me this evening and they got too excited uh, about Didi. So um, is Sianda okay? One last question here talking about Airbnb in the post-pandemic world. They're increasing revenue from remote work people that are work nomads. Interesting and not a traditional touristic metric. Look, I, I love the service. I use it myself. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but tell me the moat. Uh, that's for me the challenge because I know plenty of people who have lots of property and they use Airbnb for it, but they also all use at least two or three other services and they do not give a, you know, uh, a hoot where those customers come from. So they are not discriminatory. There is no loyalty. And that's a little bit the issue I, I have with Airbnb. And the valuations are lofty. Also very highly shorted, which is always a slightly worrying indicator. So uh, uh, look into that. Um, uh, guys, thanks you very much for tuning in. Uh, we, uh, our age, we are going to look at some more economics this week. There's going to be more data coming out. I'll be live tomorrow, same time, same place. So make sure you are subscribed, turn the little alert bell, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a lovely, beautiful trading day. Uh, don't uh, get too uh, freaked out about the DD story. Um, so 
I, I, you know, DD, the service is running. They're, they are collecting money as usual. There's no interruption. It's just that you can't download the app. That's the only thing that's happening there at the moment. The potential fines are, up from what I've seen so far, potentially 15,000 US dollars. So again, that isn't such a big deal. So I think a 25% sell-off seems a little bit of an overreaction, guys. Uh, see you tomorrow, same time. I look forward to it.